Welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. This is another Sunday update video. I also post silent build videos on Wednesdays, so be sure to check those out as well. Today, we're going to talk mostly about the 356, but also touch on the Model T briefly. So if you saw last Wednesday's video, you would have seen that I drove the Model T to a local Cars and Coffee. Uh, the Cars and Coffee is sponsored by Pelican Parts. So it's mostly Porsches and BMWs and things like that, um, but there are some other cars. There were some Corvettes and stuff like that. There was another car, I believe, from maybe the 30s. Um, but yeah, I drove the Model T there. I was extremely surprised and impressed by how well the car did on the trip because like I've mentioned before, where I live, it's a very hilly area. And to get to the car show, the car show is on the other side of a very tall, steep hill. Uh, so I was concerned how the Model T would do going up the hill. But I made it all the way up the hill. There was a section where I was only going about 10 miles an hour for a long period of time. And it, unfortunately, it was really foggy that morning. So it was a little bit sketchy getting up there, but I made it just fine. So if you haven't seen that video, you should check that out. Uh, so anyway, that was the Model T. Now we're going to talk about the 356. So one of the reasons why the Model T video came out instead of another video on the Porsche here is because I'm waiting on parts. So... Uh, if you saw the last Porsche video, you would have seen that I pulled the transmission out, the transaxle. I went through it, replaced a bunch of parts, got it back together, and got it back in the car. And then if you watch the update video after that, you would have seen uh, where I was explaining how difficult it was to find all the parts that I needed for this rear end. There was just so much stuff missing that I didn't even know that I needed. So... That, that trend is continuing. Um, I did, I mentioned before I ordered some uh, brake calipers, so I got the new rear brake calipers. That's all good. But of course I didn't realize, um, and I also, I got these hoses or these, these hard uh, brake lines that go on each side. Uh, but I didn't realize that there was also then like a, a banjo style fitting that has to go in here. And then of course there's the nut with the holes in it. There's all these little pieces that again, uh, I didn't realize I needed because everything was missing when I got it. So I've had to order those. Also, a long time ago, I ordered, there's a, uh, a drum brake that goes inside of the rotor for the disc brake. So this is actually a drum brake and a disc brake, and the drum brake is for the parking brake. And again, I've mentioned this before, but this car is a two-year only car. This is the, they only made... Uh, a lot of the parts that are used on this car for 1964 and 1965 only. So like these disc brakes, they were only on the last two years of the car. So everything is different. This piece is different. This piece is different. The parking brake parts are all different. So I did order what was supposed to be a complete kit for the parking brake, but of course it wasn't quite right. It didn't have the correct clips that go into here to hold the brake shoes in place. So, of course, they're hard to find um, and they're expensive. So just for these little plastic clips that go on here, it was 50 bucks for a set of four of them. But the only place I could find them was a seller on eBay in Canada. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how long it's going to take to get those. But that's been the case with this rear end, uh, especially. It's just little things are missing and I can't get them even from you know, the Porsche specialist here in the area, which if I can get it from them, I can get those parts usually within a day or two or a week at most. But some of the stuff you can't even get from them, you just have to find it um, from sellers on eBay and things like that. So uh, anyway, I'm waiting on parts. So that's why there was no uh, build video for the 356 this last Wednesday, but there should be one coming up next Wednesday. And hopefully I'll be able to keep putting one out each Wednesday after that. Uh, the engine, I mentioned before, um, the heads are being rebuilt and the block was being cleaned. That's at the machine shop. I still haven't got that back. I was expecting to get it back last week. Uh, so hopefully it's going to be ready any day now. And I'll pick that up. Um, so once the brakes are done, then I can move on to the engine. But in the same video as the brakes, I'm actually going to be doing a bunch of other stuff as well. So obviously I'm replacing... Um, the rotors and rebuilding the calipers and doing all that stuff here at the wheels but I also need to replace the master cylinder so I've got a master cylinder here I need to replace the, the line I think this is the replacement line I need to replace the line here from the reservoir um, I also have ordered a new 
uh, coupler here. Again, this this coupler is special uh, to this two year um, car, the 64 and 65, and this coupler is like $250. When all the other 356s use a smaller coupler, and that one is like $30. I mean, it's, it's insane. Uh, and also there's concerns that this one doesn't have like a fabric lining in it. So when this rubber fails, it just fails completely and you lose steering 100%. So these are not considered uh, good to have on your car. So I've actually ordered a kit to revert this to use the, or convert it so that it can use the original thinner disc for the 356s. It's kind of like a spacer and then a disc. But that's still like $100. And then of course that uh, is coming from like a specialty type um, supplier. So that one may take a little while as well. Um, but yeah, so the plan is in the next build video for this, it's gonna be the brakes. There's gonna be stuff like this coupler up front. I've also got to do the shifter rod that goes through the tunnel of the car and connect that to the transmission and then some other stuff to do back there at the transmission. Put some fluid in it, do the ground wire. Um, I think there's some other stuff. There's still the clutch cable. I gotta hook up all the clutch system to the transmission. So I've got stuff to do there. So hopefully, in that build video, we're going to basically have all of this stuff done. The little things that we need uh, to get the car going once the engine is ready. And then from there, we'll move on to hopefully just the engine. Just get the engine back together, back in the car, rebuild the carburetors, and drive this thing out of here. That'll be amazing. So we're making really good progress, and it's actually going really quickly. Uh, even though I'm waiting on these parts, I'm actually really impressed and surprised um, with how quickly things are going. So, like I said, I should hopefully have another build video for this one out um, next Wednesday, and then hopefully we'll continue on each Wednesday until this thing is done, which really shouldn't be that much longer. So, um, that's pretty much it for this week, guys. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing.